In this clip, we're going to look at the manner in which the reconstructive nature of memory can lead to false memory, with reference to some of the work by Loftus in terms of the impact of leading questions on the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. So a good starting point for this is to relate it to the multi-store model, because that really highlights the limitations of the whole encoding mechanism. So let's say we witness a fight. Our sensory memory will very briefly register all of the information that our senses detect, but we can only attend to limited aspects of this, which could be affected by our emotions. We might empathize with the victim. We might be focusing on the perpetrator, etc. So the stuff that actually gets actively processed in SDM is really determined by our attention. And given the limitations of our SDM, that's going to limit the amount of material that can actually be encoded as the original source in LTM. Now then later on when we need to, need to retrieve that information, we need to reconstruct it back into SDM. So what our brain does during this reconstructive process is it accesses material from the original and accurate source that's stored in our LTM and then it pulls that material back into SDM. But our SDM has got an incomplete story. So in order for our brain to conventionalize the story, what it does is it actually accesses material from other sources. And here's the problem. Some of these other sources might contain erroneous information, such as material from a leading question. So a leading question is a question that prompts or encourages the answer wanted. And it often contains a preposition, which are some details that must be true in order for the sentence to make sense. And what can happen is as a result of the leading question, it can create a misinformation effect, which can lead to a false reconstruction of the memory. Now, the misinformation effect has been widely investigated, such as this study completed in the early 2000s, in which a group of 20 participants, young adults, were shown a series of photos relating to their childhood that was supplied by a family member. And one of these photos contained a photoshopped image of them with a family member in the hot air balloon. Now it never happened, this kid had never been on a hot air balloon ride. And when they were shown the series of photos, they were asked to reconstruct their memory of it. And when they got to this photo, they were asked the leading question, what do you remember about this hot air balloon ride with your family member? Obviously they were a bit hazy. Then three to seven days later, they were interviewed again, a shorter interview, and they were asked, is there anything you can um, recall that you didn't remember last time about some of the things that you're a bit hazy on? And then a third time, again, three to seven days later, they were asked to again reconstruct the memory. And out of the 20 participants, 10, 50% of them, either had a, a partial memory or a, a vivid recall of something that never happened, i.e. the misinformation had been implanted and created a false memory. So in the Loftus and Palmer study, participants were shown a video that was similar to this. Now, in the video that the participants viewed, there was no broken glass shown in the aftermath of the collision. And importantly, this was a two-stage experiment in which stage one, the participants were split into different groups and had varying leading questions asked about the speed that the cars were traveling when they either um, collided or hit or smashed. Then a week later, they were asked a follow-up question, did you see any broken glass? And as a result show, the participants who were asked the original leading question, how fast were they were going when they were smashed, were more than twice as likely to have a false memory of seeing that broken glass than the participants who were simply asked how fast when they were going when they hit each other. So when you are responding to an exam style question that's asking about the impact of a leading question on the reliability of an eyewitness testimony. These are the four key points that I think you need to weave into your response. Firstly, that memory is a reconstructive process. That is, we've got material from the original source stored in our passive LTM, and then we need to reconstruct that memory back into our active and conscious STM when required. Secondly, you need to emphasize that the reconstruction of memory can be influenced by material from a leading question. Thirdly, you need to describe what we mean by a leading question and put emphasis that there might be misinformation 
that the person's been exposed to post the event. And then finally, you need to talk about how we can have source confusion. That is, we've got material um, from the original source that's been integrated with misinformation from a leading question and hence it's made the material or the eyewitness testimony fallible or unreliable.